So traveling overseas to have plastic surgery. This is a this is a, a rich topic. It's a very deep topic, right? Um, because a lot of people do it. Um, some people do it because they're traveling home. They're going to their country of origin where they have family members or they know people who have gone to said surgeon and they've enjoyed great results. So they're going to go home and have it there. Um, and then there's people like, you know, born and raised in the U.S. who are traveling to other countries on these so-called uh, surgery vacations. And the main motivator there is usually, from what I hear from these patients, often price. This isn't to say that there are not fabulous surgeons all over the world. The United States does not hold a patent on good surgeons, safe surgeons, etc. Um, for any type of surgery. But what I, I will say is that, um, you know, if you're born and raised here and you're going overseas to have surgery in a country that you've never been to or that you don't know the language, there are some nuances there that might make a surgical experience a little bit challenging. A lot of um, places are doing a really good job of recruiting you and making you feel like it's going to be a beach vacation or whatever. And in some cases, I guess it may work out that way. I, I've never done it, but all I know, all I can speak to is my experience as a U.S.-based surgeon in an area where patients do do this frequently and my experience getting calls about these patients. I know that this is not necessarily the majority, but my experience, okay, when it goes great, it goes great. You have your surgery, you have your beach time or whatever, you recover, you come home and you enjoy your results, fine. But for the patients, the thing is it's surgery. And surgery, surgery, no matter what you're taking off a mole or doing a heart transplant, granted those are two different scopes of surgery and invasiveness, but every time you're doing surgery, you risk complications of some kind, no matter how minor, right? Um, so I guess I say all that to say, surgery being surgery, I would want to have it as at least in the country where I live. The reason being... If you have complications, it's not always easy to hop on a plane with your passport and head back to that country and get post-op care. And what a lot of us U.S. surgeons experience, um, and this is probably not the part that people like to talk about, is that if somebody went overseas and had surgery and they come home and they have any complications, and this could be even what we would consider minor complications like uh, wound dehiscence where your incision's opening up, um, a seroma collection, like a fluid collection, if you had like a tummy tuck or something, um, and, you know, things that are like manageable, um, when your surgeon is overseas, they're not manageable by them from where you are. So now you're talking about incurring costs to go back. Okay. Um, and if you're capable of traveling at that point, if there's, you know, no reason why it's not hard for you to actually travel internationally at that point. Um, and then for a lot of patients that I encounter in this unfortunate situation, you know, what they end up doing is going through the ER. They go through the ER and the ER picks whichever plastic surgeon is on call and asks them to evaluate this person. I'm going to be quite frank with you. A lot of plastic surgeons are not keen on seeing or taking care of this kind of patient because they kind of feel like, okay, you went overseas and now you're having a complication. You're someone else's um, complication that's landing at my doorstep. I'm not saying that's the right attitude or approach, but I'm just telling you that I don't know very many people who are super happy to take on um, patients who are experiencing difficulty after overseas cosmetic surgery travel. That said, um, also don't know many surgeons who won't just do the right thing and take care of you know patients. So, but just be prepared that that surgeon who's being called in the middle of the night to take care of your infection, your seroma, your whatever, this is going to cost you money. Um, this is going to cost you additional money because this isn't post-op care for them. You know, I don't charge my patients for post-op care. If my patient has to come in or wants to come in a million times, okay, maybe not a million times, but a lot, a lot of times after surgery, just because, and sometimes my patients just stop by just because, they're not paying for that. That's part of their package. When your surgeon is abroad and you're dealing with a new surgeon who's taking on their complications, you usually pay a premium for that. And... So unfortunately, some of the savings you experience by traveling go away. And again, I'm not saying this happens to the majority of people, and I'm not trying to trash abroad uh, surgeons. I think surgeons of high skill level, responsibility, um, and ethics exist in all countries. 
um, but just leaving your country of origin to have surgery elsewhere, um, it carries with it some inherent risks about who's going to properly manage you. And that's what I, I'm talking about minor complications, major complications like skin necrosis, like when if your skin flap dies, when you have a tummy tuck or something, and you don't have someone nearby who can take care of you. That can be not only upsetting, but also extremely expensive to care for. Just something to think of. I don't say that to just, you know, scare you and, you know, try to, you know, drive everyone to abandon their plans, whatever those plans might be. But I think it's important to, you know, really consider that because I have met more than my share. I'm not, I mean, more than single digits, more, you know, high double digits, number of people who have been in this position. And one of the things they say to me with almost without fail is like, you know, my mom told me not to do this or someone that you loved was just not comfortable with it for whatever reason. Maybe they just saw some red flags with that particular surgeon, read some stuff online that they didn't like about that surgeon. Something about it did not speak to them and the person went ahead and did it anyway and they just feel, you know, super alone. It can be a very isolating situation. And again, like I said, the money that you end up saving or that you saved on the front end, just be aware that you are at risk for losing that money or a significant portion of it on the back end if you have to have someone else come in sort of in the ninth inning and take over where that other surgeon left off. Just, you know, be warned.